flight of capital, sir, 2013-12-13. I'll just read out. Net NFDI flows in crores of rupees every year which happened. The net FDI flows every year that it happened in US million dollars or in rupees and the percentage growth over the previous year. Just to say, 2010-11, sir, if I have to read it in Indian rupees crores, 97,320 crores of rupees. 11-12, 1,65,146 and so on. Percentage growth over the previous year, sir, minus 36% happened in 2012-13. Literally, FDI ran out of this country between 2012 and 13, sir, minus 36%. And this is competent doctors holding the economy together. <laughs> so then, we were told you have a predisposed mindset about FTAs. You don't want bilateral agreements, you don't want FTAs. Sir, the FTAs which were agreed during that time have been reviewed not just by us in the ministry, have been reviewed severally by several experts, have been reviewed by the much praised chief economic advisor who is often nowadays quoted by the opposition benches. Even he has said that FTAs are harming many of us. It's all right, sir. And if FTA is drafted during that time, negotiated during that time, I appreciate Commerce Minister today who is spending hours on, end on FTAs and the impact it is having on Indian industry. For negotiating such FTAs, sir, I would want to appreciate today's response in the ground for the competent doctors. Today, no one wants us even to talk about bilateral because industry is scared, MSMEs are scared, the effect of some of the old-time FTAs are hurting them. And I have no hesitation in saying that such people should have an interaction with those who have agreed with those FTAs, sir. Competent doctors again. <laughs> sir, then I'll come back. The country is accused today. Oh, harassment. Harassment is happening. Criminalization of, you know, uh, the acts, uh, IT acts and so on. I'll just quote the example of one act, sir. I'll just quote one example. In 2014, I was a Minister of State in Finance. Since then till today, the number of amendments that 200, 2013 Companies Act is going through, you can ask anyone in this house, anyone here and there, the amount of work one has got to do for cleansing the Companies Act passed in 2013, which has such a lot of criminal elements, till today, all of us are bearing the brunt, and our first five years have gone in, yes, we are doing, repealing is what is happening, the criminal act, repealing is what is happening, repealing is what is happening. Very bad, very bad, sitting and commenting is very bad, very, very, very bad. Sitting and commenting is very, very bad, very, very bad, very, very bad, very, very bad. Every, every, everything sitting and commenting will not go on record. Will not go on record. This kind of. sir. Don't join issue. So, don't join issue. Companies Act. Unless I permit. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes. Companies Act, yes. sir. Yes. Companies this Act is parliament. Is written. This is not a primary school. I am very happy for the comment. Thank you. Welcome the comment. Remember that. Primary. Remember that this is not a primary school. Very important lesson to all of us. Okay. Sir, yes, when, when we are top yes, down, to all, we have to be like a good student. Yes. But when the student gets up to speak, it's a bit difficult to accept. I agree. <laughs> Sir, I was, also, I was also told, oh, look, CIA today is telling you how to, you know, remove criminalize, criminalization from, uh, you know, the various acts. You must listen to them. I wish to say, sir, as soon as I tabled the budget, I went for a CIA forum and invited the CIA to say, please give me, give me any suggestions which you want us to take up so that the criminal elements which have gotten into our statute, statutes will be removed. I have offered it. Please do recognize that. Sir, I wish also to say this.
that the defense budget is very poorly allocated. We've not given much at all. And the Ministry of Defense and the newly appointed COD, Chief of Staff, should all protest. It was used. It was mentioned in the source. They should protest was mentioned in the source. <laughs> Sir, entire defense ministry was paralyzed. The defense of India was paralyzed. They didn't have an equipment. And look at the way, look at the way, bulletproof dresses were not available. Commander, don't join an issue with them. Okay. You don't join an issue. Please, please. Sir, the CAG report, which says about bulletproof uh, vests for the soldiers, relates to what has not been bought during their time. And I, when I was there, had ensured every soldier gets bulletproof. And what about oh, Rafael? No. What about yes. Rafael? Why didn't they buy it? Why didn't they buy it? So, having paralyzed defense of India, having paralyzed defense of India, it's very odd. A former minister wants the defense ministry to protest. I am shocked, sir, at the way in which governance is being treated. I am shocked. I, I can give with record when the bulletproof vests were bought. It was after Prime Minister came and he said it's shocking. First make sure that our soldiers get bulletproof vests. So it's all right to quote. Sir, then. Sir, we were made fun again. Toilets. Swachya Bharat Abhiyan. Madhya Pradesh example was given here. Saying 46,000 365 toilets have disappeared. We were told that. I just want to say, sir, the state government of Madhya Pradesh has initiated a verification, formal verification process, and has responded to us to say, through the district collector, this is going on. So far, about 46,365 have been checked, and it has been found that only 649 were actually missing. Since all financial incentives in Madhya Pradesh has been paid through DBT, direct benefit transfer, over the past three years, any gap will be identified and filled on priority. Now this is Madhya Pradesh government responding to us. Appropriate action will be taken against all those found responsible for any missing toilet is what is being said by them. Now the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation is also falling. Sir, there was also this, just as predisposed was attributed to us for three or four categories, I also heard the former minister repeatedly saying, ask us to believe. I want, please, the opposition, to believe your own state government. They have given this reply, sir. 46,000 gone, missing, or oh, no. 649, about which Madhya Pradesh government is taking action, we would like to believe them. I'm sure they would want to believe them too. Sir? Sir? With a lot of sentiment, midday meals. Midday meals, you're not giving food to children. was thrown back at us. I like to tell you with data, sir. I'd like to tell you with data, 2018-19, the actual expenditure on that scheme was 9,514.34 crores. All right, sir? Our government has been increasing allocations at every stage. We have kept B for 2020-21 higher than the BE of 2019-20. And even the RE is considerably higher than the BE of 1920. In 1819, sir, we had made a BE provision of 55,000 crores. 
And at RE, we increased it to 61,084 crores. The actuals were even higher at 61,815 crores. Just contrast this, sir, with just one fact from 2011-12. The BE was 40,000 crores then. Huh? RE was 31,000 crores. 40,000 BE comes down in RE to 31,000. And actually what it was, and actually what it was, was 29,215. Sir, I am not very good in Hindi, but somebody said, this is not even Dikawa, it is Chalava. Good, good, good. I don't know, but if this is the way it is, I want to contrast this with the niyat of the Modi government, sir, where the BE, the actual, the RE, are all increasing by stages and the allotment and the uh, actual for BE uh, and the BE for 2020-21 is much higher. So, I want to tell you that even the unspent balance has been kept in mind. So, the other is on the midday meal. I hope I've said the uh, actual figures there. <laughs> Sir, RE of 2019-20 has been kept at 9912, 9912.21 crore. The unspent balance is about 800 crore. Where has it gone? I'm telling you. The unspent balances of about 800 crores have all been adjusted this year itself and the allocation made under 2020-21 is 11,000 crores like the BE. Not one paisa reduced on that. <coughs> Sir, Sri Madhusudan Bhistri, who's got a lot of experience looking into the budgets of Gujarat, and yesterday his elaborate speech very clearly highlighted very good points on which I'm duty bound to answer. Sir, the differences that Sri Mistri talked about are because of the difference between gross expenditure and net expenditure. Both depictions are correct. For example, sir, in the gross terms, the interest payments in BE 2020-21 is 7,33,203.15 crores. This reflects sir, the total outgo from the Consolidated Fund of India. Parliamentary approval for this expenditure will be obtained at the time of passing of the demand for grants and the appropriation associated in the post-recess phase of this budget session. So that will explain it all. However, out of this amount, an estimated amount of 25,000 crores, which uh, Sri Mistri correctly pointed out, will come into the Consolidated Fund of India as receipts. These receipts, sir, accrue because of the premium that the government debt issuance commands. They are the premium and therefore they will be that difference. So then further, the impact on the total expenditure, sir, and on the fiscal deficit will only be the net amounts, not the gross. Since about 7.3 lakh crore is spent while 25,000 crores is received back, the net impact is only 7 lakh 8,203.16 crores. So that explains the difference in the figures which appear. So I'll come to the deficit fiscal.